So, we're going to have to redo all of that. Because Dilly apparently last night muted my microphone. He also touched things on my computer, and I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> I'm going to kick his ass. I'm actually going to wake him up and kick his ass in like 10 minutes. Oh my God. And I'm thinking everything's fine because people are talking. I'm so angry with him. <laughs> can you stream it? Yeah, I can. I just didn't realize my mic was muted for like all that time. That's so fucking embarrassing. God damn it. Oh, can you stream me beating Dilly? No. No, that, that's, no. Oh my god, that makes me so angry. Well, he, every once in a while, he, because I noticed I was, like, in AFK on a, on Discord, and I'm like, okay, well, why didn't you just go over to Discord and remove me from my room? And he's like, well, I muted you. And I remember him saying that, and I'm like, why didn't you just remove me from the Discord room? Because <laughs> we were hanging out with everybody last night, and I forgot to do it, and I walked back in, and I'm like, hey, can you remove me from Discord? And I remember him coming over to the computer and doing stuff, but I don't remember what, because it was the middle of the night. And apparently he just doesn't know how to just sign me out of Discord when he's drunk. He has to mute my microphone and change a whole bunch of settings. <sighs> Alright. Are we ready for this? I feel so stupid right now. Do we have quality? We good? <sighs> Jesus Christ. Hi, Tiger. So we're gonna just try self-voicing because it's a fucking mess. Somebody said they liked the uh, self-voicing because they're actually a blind gamer and I was like, holy shit, that's really cool. It is the future year 20. <laughs> oh boy. I don't think and I'm you gonna know be using what? it though. Things are pretty okay. Oh my lord. I've worked as a floor attendant at the Funplex for two weeks now. Hard work, to be sure, but rewarding. Oh my god, okay. I think Self voicing we'll, disabled. I think we'll use that for Iris. It'll give me it'll give me time for my fucking throat to not die every time I have to talk with her. <sighs> Things change so much in this stream. What? Oh, I'm a robot. In a spiritual sense, at least. I've helped Naomi repair pinball games. I've had tea with Francine while she reminisced about far out 1960s. I've evacuated gamers when the kitchen accidentally caught on fire. I've had numerous kids puking up nachos in my clothes. I've scraped gum off any number of surfaces. I've chased what turned out to be an entirely too many spiders out of a single ski ball machine. Okay, look, I know I'm not painting this in a very rosy picture so far, but honestly, I'm happy. I'm happy even amidst the chaos and grossness. I'm happy, that's all that matters, right? Right, you're happy. This is the best I've seen you in ages, is it? Before you'd come home all drained and exhausted, now, well, you're still tired, but a good tired. My roommate, Juniper, she's taken to stopping during my lunch break whenever she could get away from her office cubicle long enough to do so. It's still hard work, don't get me wrong. But overall, it's good work. I feel, I just feel good, totally good and stuff. Yeah. Good. Self-voicing enabled. Iris, agreed. 
Super good. Double plus good. Self voicing disabled. Iris, you talked about you listening on my conversations. What did I tell you about that? Self voicing enabled. Iris, to pretend I wasn't eavesdropping even when I am? Self voicing disabled. Exactly. You know, I'd be more upset about my creepy privacy invading digital overmistress, but I have to admit, Iris has really pulled through for me. Even if she also ordered me a three month supply of pizza bagels on my when behalf. Self voicing enabled. Iris, but Isaac, when pizza's on a bagel. Self voicing disabled. So, Juniper, how long do you have left on your break? Any time to squeeze in some pinball or something? I could spot you tokens. No can do. Our new assistant synergy manager arranged a team at building exercise. I have to, like, move colored bits of paper around or something and then exchange high fives. Assistant synergy manager? That sounds like a very vague job. Nah, it's actually entry level. Good pay and right on track in the middle of management. Pretty cushy if a bit dull. Funny thing is that they asked me if I knew anybody who'd fit in before they started advertising for candidates, and I said no. Who'd want to do that? When was this exactly? Oh, two weeks ago. So, two weeks ago, right when I needed to find work, you told them you didn't know any good candidates for a well-paying entry-level job. Oh, um... <laughs> well, uh, but... You wouldn't have liked being an assistant synergy manager, right? Not one bit. Oh boy. Juniper, please tell me you told them no because I had already taken the job at that point, not because you forgot. Hey, I didn't forget. I just, you know, didn't bother telling you about the open position that night. Oh, honey. I mean, you'd already had so many jobs you hated. I knew you'd hate being an assistant synergy manager, so I didn't feel the need to tell you. And it all worked out, right? You just spent the last five minutes telling me how happy you are here. Okay. Not a lie, I was happy here indeed. Also not a lie, having packed pizza bagels for lunch after having pizza bagels for breakfast because we barely had enough money to cover rent this week pulled together. Also not a lie, Gavin constantly hiding the numbers from us, insisting things were fine, all while dryly joking about perpetually being on the edge of crash and burn. Also not a lie, that every time someone in my family tried to chase after happiness and disability, we fell deeper and deeper into debt and misery. <sighs> Isaac, say something, you're scaring me. I shouldn't feel angry. She stood by me for years, supported me, trying to do what's best for me, even if she wasn't always skilled at that sort of support. I shouldn't feel upset. I've been genuinely enjoying my time at Funplex. I don't need some grand reason why when I felt feel this good deep down inside. I have no right to be angry, upset about losing an opportunity at a safer, more stable future, right? It's okay, I want, uh, I'm where I want to be. It's okay, everything is fine. It's okay, why didn't you tell me? Um, I'm where I want to be. It's fine. It's not a really big deal. So don't be angry or upset. Simple as that. Hey, Justy. I decided I was done compromising, right? Done with settling, going with the flow. I'm going to be the one who break family curse. I chose this path of my own free will. Even if, I've night Even if I didn't have all the facts this, this time, but if I'm going to be honest, the boundless confidence doesn't cover- Bodhi, are you fucking kidding me? Alright, you're sitting up there today. Bodhi just jumped to the top of the bookcase, and there's nothing up there for him. And you're gonna just be stuck there now. I- We can't- We can't stop- We can't stop him. I can't stop him from doing it, so I just have to keep an eye on him every so often. <sighs> you better not fucking chew on anything up there, or I'll beat you. I 
Khajiit knows where you hide the skooma. Dilly thinks he's a cute or er, a smart cat, and I agree, he's very intelligent. He's just a pain in the ass sometimes. Because he's about to knock shit off the shelf. Bodhi, I really I'm very tempted to lock you out of the room right now. I love you. But oh my god, you are such a problem child. Have you ever had a child that is constantly getting themselves in trouble and you just want to wrap them in duct tape to a strong, um, stable object? Just so they can't do anything to hurt themselves or people around them? That's Bodhi. Good morning, chat. Yes, okay. I don't hate Bodhi. I'm just so worried he's going to hurt himself or everything around him. One second. Bodhi, honey. You're not going to be able to get down on your own, first off. You're very stupid when it comes to that. Oh my god, please stop. Are you such a problem? Oh my goodness. <sighs> Gotta tell him. You can't teach a cat to not climb. It doesn't work. They will just do it when you're not looking. It's that simple. He found out he can jump to the top of the bookcase, and now he just doesn't. Poor thing. So stupid. <sighs> but if I'm going to be honest, boundless confidence doesn't matter or cover the simple fact that I chose to be vulnerable rather than safe. If the arcade closes, if anything goes wrong, still, no need to jump all, dump all that on Juniper. It's okay, Juniper. You were right. I'd have hated that job. And things are great here. <laughs> Good. You were kind of freaking me. <clears throat> Trust me, it's the right decision. You'd learn to loathe working at my office, like I do. I don't loathe. I wouldn't never. I. That's just not me. I mean, sure, the pay is good, and you get solid health insurance, and paid vacation time, and they have a sweet coffee shop right in the lobby, and these really great chairs that support your lower back, like thousand-dollar chairs from Sweden crafted by master chairsmiths. Juniper, I said it's fine. Everything is fine. Honestly, I'm okay. I mean, I won't deny that that, that job would have been a safer bet. I know it's... Er, I want to contribute my fair share to the apartment rent, you know? But what's done is done. I'd rather look forward than back. Hey, hey uh, forget I said anything. Please forget I said anything. I'm sorry. I should have told you. I shouldn't have held that back. But I still wouldn't have pushed you to take the job. It's totally horrible at my office. You'd have been miserable there, like me. Juniper, it's cool. You're right. I debated it. Okay, okay, good. I've got a good feeling about all this. I think you're right where you need to be, even if I was uh, kind of dumb getting here. Hey, I gotta get back to the office. Have a good lunch, okay? I feel a distant rumble of frozen box pizza bagels taunting me from the recently repaired employee break room. Yeah, okay. And you have a good rest of hours of your day, yeah? You bet. I'm okay with this. Everything is fine. Right? Right. What I need right now is a distraction, and frozen pizza bagels were most are cert most certainly not it. My pocket money is really slim, but I think I need to step out for some fresh air and treat myself to a better lunch than that. And hey, maybe some company, too. Nice and distracting talking to someone about Anything other than this? Let's see. Who's available? Percy's taking a break from his score, guy chasing. I know Percy is cool with people interrupting his movie mania, but I still prefer to wait until he's taking a break between rounds. Looks like it's looks like good timing for lunch. 
Percy's flipping through messages on his phone in a highly bored manner when I talk, walk up to him. Hey, Percy. How's Moopy today? Hmm? Oh, pretty bad performance overall. I haven't I even cleared a million for the day, and a few of my stock picks are down. But bad luck overall. Lovely day. But on the whole, can't complain. Every day is a gift. So do you need something, Isaac? To be honest, if I don't get out of here and get my mind off things, I'm gonna melt down. I was thinking lunch. You had lunch yet? Don't you usually have those little pizzas? You know it is, huh? I've subsidized on peanut butter sandwiches for a time. It's nothing to be ashamed of, is it? Life has ups and downs. But seeing as you're looking to avoid the downs at the moment, by all means, let's fetch some lunch, if I may suggest our destination. You haven't been to the holy s whole story yet, have you? The donut shop? Donut shop and used bookstore. They have pastries and sandwiches and the like, and it's a charming little cafe at heart. If you'd be kind enough to accompany me, unless you'd rather have little pizzas. Donuts and books, a winning combination. Let's be off. Despite coming uh, coming to this little strip mall for two, for two weeks, I hadn't actually visited our neighbors. Mostly I did whatever needed doing. I took orders from Gavin, lent a hand on Nashley and Naomi, things like that. Whatever the job happened to call for, no more, no less. I couldn't say I'd been part of the community uh, outside the immediate circle of my co-workers, whereas others visited the whole story frequently. Oh my god, my nose. Percy leads the story into a shot that smells strangely of dusty old books and sugary sweetness. I didn't think I'd ever be in a little independent bookstore, or a bookstore at all, for that matter. It's 20,000. <laughs> I don't even know. 20XX! Who buys books in a brick and mortar stores anymore? But the sub despite the subdued atmosphere compared to the arcade, there are customers present and accounted for, sipping coffee, reading old time tomes, and yes, munching donuts. Percy, Percy secures a tiny table for us before directing me to the bar. Hang on, what the heck is up with this menu? It's organized in the Dewey Decimal System? I'll have a Douglas Adams, don't worry, they know my order, and it's my treat, yes? I mumble out of thanks, trying not to make a big deal of it. Aw, Percy. Cash is tight, and boutique cafe pastries wouldn't help my situation much. A pair of middle-aged guys wait to take my order. Hey, I'd like a... One super sweet glazed chocolate sprinkle surprised with orange juice. Oh, God. You know what surprised me? What's your favorite donut? Or just glazed and coffee? What's your favorite donut? Let's just do that. Hey, what's good? What's your favorite order from this menu? One Terry Pratchett coming up. A jam pastry with clatchy and coffee. Okay. The second fellow puts together my order and also drops a small paperback book into the tray featuring a many-legged wooden travel trunk in the cover. I'm very concerned with their grins. <laughs> What have I woken up to? <laughs> You've woken up to arcade spirits. It is a dating sim. Huh. A literal literary lunch. With alliteration, apparently. Say, you work at the Funplex, don't you? Right. We've seen you walk past our doors every morning and evening. Like clockwork, tick tock. Right, sorry. I should have introduced myself. Floor attendant is a Kiproni. At your service. I'm your inside guy for tokens and tickets. Oh, we are lousy at video games. Totally lousy. But Francine's just a peach, isn't she? Sweetest dame you'll ever meet. Regardless, welcome to the whole story. I'm Ben. I'm Matt. No relation to the actors. Although they're cuties and so are we. Oh, stop. Stop being cute? Never. Apparently sugar is available in forms other than round and holy. Anyway, don't let us stop you from having fun on your little date. Wouldn't dream of it. It's not a date. Just friends, then? Friendly friends on a play date? Maybe the real date was the friends we made along the way. I'd say the real friends Jesus. were the friends we made along the way. No! <laughs> the way was also the real friends who were the real friends we made along the way. <laughs> okay, now you're just being silly. And how? Anyway. Anyway. Next order, please. 
<laughs> Bear waves the next customer in. I love them. As I return to Percy's table with our orders on a nicely decorated wooden tray. Huh. I'd have warned you, but honestly, bet it matter. The best experience without spoilers. They invited me to their wedding, you know. I was new to town back then, but, well, they're kind-hearted, to say the least. Percy opens the Douglas Adams book they gave him with the, his biscuits, but only per peruses it lightly. Out of politeness, the book lenders. Soon we've devoured our food, it's probably not a very nourishing lunch at all. All told, but sweet treat does wonders for my mood. Except Percy definitely look, picks up uh, on something being a little off. Penny for your thoughts? It's complicated. Penny for my thoughts, then? No need to share yours if you're in no mood. Hm, okay. Seriously. Why Mr. Mopey's Magic Maze? Why not? Because there's easier high scores out there to knock over. I looked it up on Twin Galaxies last night. Their scores stood for 30 years. And that's the challenge, isn't it? But I suppose it's not entirely the challenge that appeals to me. It's, well, how do I put this? It's personal. Uh-oh. If you don't want to talk about it. I suppose I've teased it enough. We may not know each other well enough to be besties, yes, but it's a tale worth telling. Put simply, Moopy is... It was my it little... It was my little oh. sister's favorite game. Dear little Stella. Oh. My sister was a child prodigy. A leap ahead of the curve in every respect. Sharpest mind. Cleverest wit. The warmest heart. Mm hmm. And mazes. Oh, how she loved mazes. She had a gift for pattern recognition and optimization. A gift and a passion. It thrilled her to no end. To take on a mental challenge and defeat it soundly? We got her books and books filled with mazes and puzzles, and she clear one of them every day. Always wanted more to fill her dreary hours, but only so many mazes. To solve the problem, I got her a handheld game console and a copy of Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze. Honestly, at the time, I knew next to nothing, or bleh, I knew next to knowing of video games a friend of mine in arithmetic class suggested it. I took every stop, scrap of pocket, cha pocket, pocket change. Okay, pocket change I can mass muster. Try buying that game for her. My family had next to no money, you see, and nobody family in a nothing village. Well, I suppose you can relate, yeah. I can relate, yeah. Um. I struggled, yes, but we've tried to keep it level. I think we just fucked him over. No! But ever since leaving home, I have been in and out of jobs, barely able to contribute to co-renting an apartment. It's been difficult, but I've tried to keep level. Nobody likes to be fined by work, not even working on an arcade. Oh, he liked that. Do what you love, love what you do. Yes, by all means, but having goals, dreams, that's just as important. So the game helped feed my sister's need for greater and greater challenges. That's the key to Mr. Mopey. And you see, it generates pseudo, what? Pseudo random mazes. Pseudo, as opposed to, well, it's early 1980 technology. Depending on your path through the mazes, you can precede the randomness. It's part of the challenge, playing the game of the game. And Stella could play the game of the game like no other, better than I could even. She'd no doubt have beaten the high score by now. Her name, up in lights, is the champion to unseat a 30-year legacy. And that's why I'm a maniac for Mr. Moopy. I waited for him to continue, but nope, that's it. I think I understand, though. <clears throat> Zella can't take the score for herself, not anymore. You're trying to beat before she can.
Ah. Uh... <sighs> she's dead. It's very obvious that she's dead, but I don't know. Yeah, he's trying to do it for her. We'd have to, uh, Vincent, we'd have to beat 10 first, and we're not playing another long game until after, um, Pokemon. You keep using the past tense when describing your sister. I'm sorry for your loss, Percy. I'm sure she was every bit as bright and clever as warm as you described. I wish I could have met her. Thank you, Isaac. Her loss is, it certainly left a hole in the world. When she passed a few years ago, all her potential, all her brilliance is just gone. Percy sighs deeply, letting the memory wash over him pass. If not for the heart condition, despite everything we tried, everything I did, in the end, it was simply too much. And now, Mr. Moopy's my connection to Stella. She dreamed of beating it, but the little handheld version she had wasn't quite the equal of the original. So, one day, I'm going to take down the score. And I'm going to do it in her name. I'll put her initials at the top of that scoreboard. S-I-S. 3.5 million points by Percival James Sinclair. Earned in honor of Stella Isabel Sinclair. I know that on that day, somewhere she'll be smiling at me and saying, Good show, Percy. Good show. I'm not crying, you're crying. Despite the sadness of the story, I can't help but smile at the ending. Well, on the day you beat the score for floor attendant Isaac, we'll be there to cheer you on. Thank you, love. It's appreciated. Oh, drink water, I will. Beep, beep. <laughs> Isaac, lunch break's over. Back to the grindstone, eh? The arcade's not that grindy. Hmm. Curious, hmm. Well, if you'd pardon me at the obtrusive observation, you do seem to be going through the motions. Huh? No, I'm not. I'm having a blast there. By doing what needs doing, yeah? Of course, I'm a diligent employee. I suppose it's a question of ambition, but it's not my place to judge, and you've worked to, yeah? Ya. Go on, go on. I'll return the tray and our books. Oh, Percy. Can't say I get what he meant by that. But he's right about one thing. There's work to do. I take my leave and I return to Funplex. Time for the afternoon shift. That's usually when things heat up. After the quiet morning, kids, uh, more kids coming in after school. More pro gamers rolling in with crews. I'm headed back to my desk, ready to take care of what needs taken care of. And when I'm intercepted en route. Isaac, Ashley, you're both back. Good. I was hoping to catch you before we left. Oh, what's up? Hands is okay. up. He is? <laughs> okay. Ashley, I'll bring the van around shortly, Isaac. You'll be flying solo today. Hang on, what's happening exactly? Who's Hamza? Hamza's a game finder and an auctioneer. He uh, gives next to no, no notice when a new block of games will be going under the gavel, so we need to move. Ashley, Naomi, Francine, and I will be going to the auction for the rest of the afternoon while you run the funplex. My first instinct was to nod and go along with it. Gavin's the law around these parts, but Percy's words were still dangling away in my mind. Doing what needs doing is great and all, but maybe I needed to step up a bit more. Plus, the idea of being trapped in here during the happiest hours with no support was hardly appealing. Gives. I went in on this too, typing along. You're trusting the complex to a newbie, I might burn it down. How about Ashley and I swap places and I come too? Um. Hmm. So I think this is a branching path. 
if we go with him. Ashley, do you mind switching places? I would love to go. Is there a reason it has to be Ashley, not me? Nope. Definitely not. He just needs muscle to help move games around. I've got muscle? Well, I've got a muscle or two. Just ask Naomi. I help her move games all the time. Yeah. I feel like such a third wheel to those auctions anyway. Let Isaac be the third wheel. Let me handle the floor. I'll be the finest third wheel I've ever met, trust me. I just... I want to know more than I've, or do more than I've been doing. Different things, new things. Show some initiative, like. I suppose it wouldn't change much to bring Isaac instead. But no costume today, Ashley. I need non-plush fingers on duty in case of jack ticket jams. Pinky can stay in storage for the afternoon. I'm just happy to be helping folks out one way or another. I need to get, go get the van. Wait out front, please. We'll probably be closed by the time you get back, so I'll see you in the morning. Floor attendant Ashley away. Leaving me waiting outside with two traveling companions. Not much time to tat, however, as Gavin pulls his van around er, and a rental trailer around. Oh my, how exciting. I really go on adventure these days. It's just a quick trip, ma'am. Any trip and an adventure. It is an adventure if you still make it one, shall we? I freaking love Francine. Four of us pile in, and it's off to the highway. <laughs> Cute. Gavin consulting driving map on his phone leads us to the city via a series of weird turns and back roads. Trust me, this will save time in the long run. Where's Hamza set up this time? On site at some abandoned estate just outside town. It's about to be torn down, but they found a trove of arcade games in the basement. Woo! So exciting! I love arcade raids! That's the mystery machine, right? Arcade auctions. Raids. Auctions. Uh, you guys got an arcade to English dictionary I could borrow? Francine, without looking up from her knitting, answers. A raid is when a bunch of collectors get together and rescue games before they can be junked by their original owner. An auction is when somebody sells off their arcade games one at a time to a crowd of active bidders. So, which is this, a raid or an auction? It's both, dearie. Hamza, that sweet boy, buys up private collections before they can be thrown away. He rescues them from their terrible fate and then auctions them to au uh, auctions off his fines. Sort of. Okay, now I'm busy in the sort of part. I'm the newbie here, remember? Well, okay, so Hamza obviously auctions off games for cash money, but he's a very whimsical kind of guy. Once I saw him trade off a vintage burger time in exchange- Oh my god, I love burger time. In exchange for someone's super secret chili recipe, passed down through generations of a family. In other words, he's just on the edge of being a loon. This would be a lot simpler if it was just a raid. We pay up front, we declare what games we want, and cart them away. Instead, he ambushes us with the impromptu auctions and makes us come down there to entertain his whims. Wonderful. I think it's sweet. He wants to make sure the games go to good homes, to people who really want them, even if they can't pay. And really, we should be honored to get an invitation. He's trying to cut out the big franchise arcades like Deco's Palace and help the little guys like us. Um, it's inefficient and it relies entirely on keeping on Hams' good side. Huh. Helping out the little guy seems good here. I'm guessing Hams is the sort of person who get a lot of, er, who would let a kid have the game of his dreams for free and doesn't care about money. He cares about people, am I right? Crack de mundo. Hams is a great guy. Is he hard to predict? Sure, predict, sure, but he's got a big heart. That means something in this business. Not enough big hearts left some days. Yes, because that's how you pay bills and keep doors open, by having a big heart. I won't deny we can sometimes squeak out a trade that's practically a steal. Thanks for this 
thanks to his personal modus operandi. But let's not push too far. Here, we need to temper out our expectations a little, I, I suspect. Not. We don't have room to add many more games, especially relics like Tams he usually did. Mm. Well said. But what about the off-site storage unit? We can just rotate games in and out of there more often. Nearly full to bursting, and not cheap for us to rent on a monthly basis. I'm not saying we have to go home empty-handed. Certainly a few holes in our roster we can fill. Should we find an excellent deal and the best and beat the other bidders? But consider this, above anything else, a way to maintain relations with Hamza, even if we don't end up bidding. Aww. Now, now, Naomi. Gavin knows the numbers. I'm in favor of making our little fun plaques more and more fun. But floor space is finite. And Gavin, remember, if we find some darling little game Naomi would lavish adoration upon, we can always retire an older game. Life, my young friends, is a series of trade-offs. Well, isn't it better to, you know, not just settle and compromise mm. all the time? Well, now, there are trade-offs, and there are trade-offs. It's silly to say that you should never compromise. As silly as it is to say you should always compromise. It's what you compromise that defines who you are. You're all so young yet. You've time to make mistakes in learning what trade you need to make. Unless you don't make rent on your apartment or your stomach's growling. Iris and Juniper have pushed me to stop settling for less out of life and to stand up for myself and my happiness. And I've done just that, without regret, so everything should be fine now, right? Right? New, 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 bleh, new default topic diversion, the weather. Well, at least it's a nice day for our outing out, right? Of course. Come on. Wonderful. Glad I picked the plastic bags to wrap the cabinets in just in case. That's our Gavin, always thinking ahead. Trying to protect your investments, huh? From Hamza's invitation, it seems this arcade was largely abandoned and left out. Or er, left to rot. I'd rather not add water damage to the ailments the games are already suffering. It's so sad when we come across a wonderful game that's just ruined beyond repair. Most collectors show their collections out of a lot of love, but others just don't care. You find old games and barns exposed to the elements falling apart. I suppose it's one thing we can easily agree on. It's important to take care of your games. For the resale value, you mean? Broken game's no fun to play with, and it's a shame to see a classic in terrible condition. Consider pinball. Pinball games are very prone to breakdowns, particularly older ones. To experience them in their glory, you have to show them care. Even beyond a busted game earning no quarters, it feels like a waste to allow an enjoyable game life, game life follow. A waste of true potential. Huh, good point. Glad to see those two getting along better, even if Naomi kept preemptively attacking him along the way here. With the rain pounding down on the van roof, conversation gets a bit difficult. Gradually, everybody resumes fiddling about with their phones, knitting, or driving. Leaving me to wonder, exactly where is the auction and or raid happening anyway? We've been diving, driving for some time, leaving the city far behind. What about a massive trove of arcade games being di uh, what would a massive trove of our game games doing this far out in the sticks? Maybe it's some closed down roller rink, or an old bowling alley, or... We are in a Scooby-Doo episode, uh, abandoned arcade, storming weather. We need a quarter monster or something now. Look at this shit. How did you call, call this? This is also a song from an arcade game. What is this from? I've played this. What music is this? Oh 
Oh my god, I know this song. Fuck. Somebody help me. Maybe it's a creepy old house that's likely haunted exactly 87,194 ghosts. Ah, uh, the classic keep rony luck in play. So majestically awful. So, we are Shaggy, Gavin's Fred. Naomi's Velma, Francine's Daff- Oh, who's Scooby? It's Luigi's Mansion? No, it's not Luigi's Mansion. Ah, uh, the classic keep rony luck. Uh, it's so majestically awful. Gavin pulls alongside any number of other fans and trucks. We were all a little late, it seems. Good grief. Is this really an auction site? Creepy, definitely creepy. At least an eight on the creepo meter. An old home is character. I feel let's not judge it by this exterior, shall we? I really think it's pretty. With all speed, the group hurries inside to get away from the weather. Oh my god, really? <laughs> Look at this place! A large group has already gathered to the foyer of the crumbling estate, but one rushes forward to greet us in a blur, as the others pay little mind. Greetings, friends. Of course. Hamza welcomes our friends from the funplex. Welcome, welcome. Gavin, stalwart as ever. Naomi, love what you've done with your hair. Miss Francine, a beauty surpassed only by your wisdom. Agreed. She's a doll. It's a classical piece used in a lot of games? Really? I didn't know that. Oh, fresh. And a new player, it seems. Who might you be? Is it Keeper I see. Greetings to you and yours. I am known as Hamza. Seeker of antiquity, finder of things lost, player of games. And welcome to, well, not my home, but a place where Hamza shall provide hospitality regardless. Holy crap, he's literally a Disney villain. I doubt it. I don't think he's a bad guy. Out of a dump, isn't it? Secret of Antiquity, 1980 is antique. Thank you for your gracious inv invitation. I will say thank you for your gracious invitation. Thank you for your invitation, Mr. Hansa. I understand you only invite a select few. The Funplex is proud to accept your summoning. <laughs> now you sound like me. Indeed, I'm very careful who I allow the events. These machines deserve owners who will respect and appreciate them. Hamza will expect nothing, accept nothing less. What's up, girl? Alas, I have not a moment to enjoy your fine company as a cuproni. Perhaps later, but for now, it is time. <laughs> Clapping twice for attention, Hamza rallies the small crowd in the room to begin the proceedings. Friends, companions, longtime allies of the noble art of the arcade, welcome, welcome to Donna Wood. Its story begins nearly 30 years ago when legendary pop musician Donna Michaels, singer of such hits such as Thrilling and Mama Don't Mope, did a stately pleasure dome decree. I hear Dilly playing with Bodie in the hallway and it's adorable. I hear him moving around now. He's so cute, guys. Here, the reclusive idol crafted a private amusement park, a petting zoo, and an arcade. Alas, she found only, er, she could only enjoy this paradise for a short 10 years before her tragic death. Needless to say, the estate has fallen on hard times ever since, and this year it shall be torn down to make way for condominiums. Eh, yeah, that sounds about right. I really love old, um, old houses, like old mansions and shit. It's always been a really big thing that I've enjoyed. I like taking tours of them. I like looking at them. I think, I don't know anything about them. Let, let me, let me be totally clear, guys. Um, I don't know shit. But just the idea of this, this house being so beautiful is really cool. Needless to say, the estate is, uh, all right. But not before we have our say. Friends, those games that Donna Michaels cherished still lurk one floor below, ready to be rescued from such a terrible fate. 
It is our moral imperative to do so. I have paid the estate owners a princely sum for the entire lot. Now, Hamza parcels them out to you. By all means, browse the collection. See which pieces sing out to you. Aww. On the far table, you shall find refreshments, grapes, sparkling wine, and delicacies from my travels. Mingle, Kavot, and we shall begin the auction in one hour's time. He is the quintessential, I'm very rich, and this is the most fun I will have for a long time. And he does this kind of thing constantly because it's fun. And holy crap, that's really awesome. Architectural. Yeah. Indeed, a lavishly filled arranged table that probably costs more than any single arcade game is put together as descended upon by invitees soon after. I feel like I'm attending some ancient Roman celebration of debauchery and gluttony. Not an arcade raid. Or an arcade auction, or whatever. Because he can't be making more money off of this than he paid. Donna Michaels, I knew it. I should have recognized Donna Wood when we pulled in. But it was raining so hard. Who? You never heard of Donna Michaels? She was the hottest musical act in 1986. Now I, mean, I was born in 1994. I'm totally plugging my phone into the van stereo so we can blast girls just want to play games all the way home. But first, I'm going to go check out the cabinets in the arcade. I was ready not into, uh, I'm not really into mingling later. She dashes off with all speed, adding for the stairs leading below. Hmm. Suppose I should go network a bit. Hams is always, er, uh, Hams' events always draw an interesting crowd of rival arcade owners. Heading for the food stuff, Gavin arranges himself a plate so he has an excuse to hang around and eavesdrop on the other collectors. Leaving me to do, uh, stuff? Now I see why Ashley was bored at these events. Gavin smoozes, Naomi analyzes finds. Francine's already napping in the chair. <laughs> She's so cute. I've got nothing to do. Uh, well, when in doubt, find someone who knows what they're doing and stick to them like glue. I'm gonna stick with... Hmm. So, I like Naomi a lot, but I feel like I could learn more about the um we could learn more about the technical aspect of the games with naomi and we can learn about more of the political part of the games with gavin if we learn more about the technical stuff we can learn about the, the political stuff later I also enjoy touring the local architectural coolness. I lived near some FL rights work. Toured it a few times. Really? Wow, that's really nice. Where is Daddy Percy? Daddy Percy's still out the arcade. Let's browse games with Naomi. I'm really not interested in the arcade version of Game of Thrones going up there. Going on up there. I am though. I'm interested in both. Gavin can handle these guys. Me? I went to see the legendary arcade. Hamza was tight talking up, so I head downstairs to join Naomi. Whoa. It's a private collection or a full fledged arcade. I was expecting a handful of games and a pool table or something, but this. This is three times larger than the Funplex itself, even coded in dust and disrepair. It's awe inspiring. And it also is hard to find any anyone in this maze of tightly packed games. IDs are browsing available stock to decide what's worth bidding on, making it crowded as well. But eventually, I locate Naomi, practically cuddling a narrow-looking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle machine. Oh! Is it look, look! A two-player variant of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. These were only released in Oce the Oceana region. Such a rare find. Wait, wasn't that game originally four-player? Why would anybody want a version with only two joysticks? Well, because, because, I mean, it's rare. It's a rare find. And it, it's less fun. Not the point. Anyway, it's hard to find these. Two-player or four-player. I'd love to have it in the arcade. I'd love to have that. And this one, and this one, and... 
Oh, if only I could take these all of these home with me. I mean, some have water damage, and others likely have burnt CRTs and controls. They all need work, but... I recall the game she was working on when I first met her. Extensive repairs needed just to make it playable. So, not only would you like to bid on it, with, or bid and win the game, but you'd have hours of work and plenty of spare parts to purchase ahead of you. I know, isn't it great? Okay, is there a nice way to say this? No, you love restoring games, but do you actually have money for the new projects? How many restorations are you backlog right now? <sighs> I think I'll go with, I know you love restoring games, but I know you love bring, bringing in a broken old game back to working order, huh? Yeah. Absolutely. These games deserve to shine, as they once did ages ago. If we could turn back the clock and let them be what they truly can be, let people play them as they were in their prime, well, there is no greater feeling. Did you enjoy the challenge of restoration too? Repairing hardware, replacing your damaged art, and the problem with solving by broken monitors? You know me so well, Isaac, exactly. And all of this is Admiral. I really love how happy these projects make you, Naomi. But there's a flip side. How much time does it take to restore a game? Hmm. I'd say it's in good shape. Maybe a few hours if it's really a wreck and needs extra love. A few days, maybe weeks, if parts are on the back order. Hey, now think of the games we currently have and how many still need work or break down frequently. Can you take a bunch of new projects? Well, uh, I could make the time work late, right? Even a girl with bottomless energy has her limits. You know, I mean, size, frustration building. It's not... I know. Oh, sorry. I'm not dense. I know there's only so much we can realistically do. So many projects I can actually take on. But I, I wish I could do more. I wish we could do more. The Funplex hmm. has never really been a success. Even before I came on board, it was always struggling to stay afloat. I joined it because so few arcades still have the games I love. But I can't turn our situation around, can I? No matter how hard I try. This was my first job. Part of me is hoping it'll be my last job, too. That I can happily spend all my days tinkering with these wonderful games. Every kid says they want to be a fireman or an astronaut or a robot cop or something, but nobody actually ends up doing that. Except me. I wanted to fix up arcade games, and that's what I'm doing. It's all I ever wanted to do. So, when I see all these old, broken games, I just want to show them the love I can give. I could be happy working on them for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's dedication. And really? You went straight from school to an arcade job? I mean, I meandered from job to job. Never really sure what I wanted. That's normal, right? Yeah! Oh, definitely. I'm the oddball here. It's funny. I followed my heart, and I found what I wanted, what I needed, and now, well... Now I'm scared someday it'll all come to the end. Funplex will and close. If the funplex goes under? I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. All I ever wanted was to work in an arcade. And I'm literally living my dream. Okay, now I feel bad for bringing down our day. Hey, look, you never know, right? Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll find a game down here that brings in thundering herds of players. Right? It's a slim slope, and we both know it, but Naomi clings to it immediately, eagerly. What's up, Pikinora? Hey, Smack Attack. My little blank balance and grumbling stomach mean I need to cling to that hope as well. I made my choice, now I need to make that choice work. Mm. We just need to find the right game, something nobody's played in a long time, something that'll tug at the nostalgia strings. It's difficult. And finding the right balance, especially in the year 2056. A lot of these games are on life support, borrowed time. But they can re be repaired, right? Well, yeah, for now. But CRTs, the monitors that power these old games, before LCDs and new 3D flats started replacing them, they're in short supply. Nobody makes them anymore. I mean, who buys a 2-beast television anymore? Nobody. 
it's high definition and dumb 3D projection tech that works, which looks awful. Nobody appreciates a good CRT anymore. Aren't high def displays way cheaper though? I've seen some old games running on them in other arcades. They're wrong, is what they are. The games weren't designed for pixel perfect flat panels. They're designed for fuzzy tubes. The picture looks weird on LCD. Even two weeks in, I'm still fuzzy myself on a lot of this stuff. But I grew up on the internet age. I'm a silicon literate. I got op opinions. Let's use LCDs, just bash people over the head to make their vision blurry. <laughs> How about we buy some cheap common games then give and then get got some for spare CRTs. That'll piss her off. Can we simulate the fuzzy image and still use an LCD? See, I feel like if we simulate it, then we at least have a excuse me, a chance. But I don't know how expensive that would be. Let's try simulating it. Hang on, can't you fake it using a high definition screen? Just makes the picture fuzzy and add fake scan lines. Bend it to a little so it looks like his curved tube. Done. Ugh. That sounds awful. I mean, that's like serving some non fat frozen yogurt and claiming it's a delicious sundae. I like Froyo. I do too. Don't mind me just lurking? Alright, lurk away, Carl. I guess we could do that. But we need an extra computing unit to process the image. Maybe a Raspberry Pi or something. I have some ideas. What if we don't have money for new games? We certainly don't have money for R&D. It'll have to wait. Thank you. You know, I'm glad you're with us at Funplex. Whether you're my side or Gavin's side, it's just nice to have someone who cares about games, or cares about games around. Especially Sponge, she's way more into cosplay than gaming. But it's kind of odd, you know? What? Feeling like I'm not alone? I know that sounds dramatic, but I'm so used to toiling away in the little workshop with Ashley and Gavin not really caring about things I love. They're kind enough to me and friendly. Well, Ashley is. But ever since you showed up, I feel like there's someone with me. It's odd. I'm not complaining, though. I guess it just takes a lot getting used to. After years of feeling perfectly content to be alone. Anyway, from sh away from strangers, crowds, I don't, I mean, it's not really my thing. I don't like networks like Gavin does or socialize like Ashley does. <laughs> and, and now I'm making things weird, so I'm going to stop there. Besides, I'm just about done taking inventory down here. How about you and I? Suddenly shouting and stomping feet from the floor above. What the? Sounds like there's a fight or something going on up there. I think we better go see what's what. If you'll come with me, I mean. Quickly, we hurry upstairs. What's going on? I heard something. Hamza has ejected a rep representative of Dark Carnival known as Deco's Palace from our midst. Not soon enough, in Hamza's opinion. Oh, okay. I guess everything's fine, then. Excuse me. I'm gonna go work and put an ap er, get my work apron on since I'll be moving these games soon. I mean, if you don't mind, after you change, we could coordinate our wish list. I want to get that settled before the auction begins. No, don't leave me alone with this. What is this? Bacchanalian orgy master. <laughs> what the fuck? What does that word mean? Bacchanalian. Characterized or given to drunken revelry, riotously dr drunken. Excellent! Hey, Sagita. Now let us resume the social amusements and, uh...
Jocularity. Jocularity. All right. Is it Cuproni? Will you speak? Yes. Hamza leads me off, away from the chattering crowd, presumably not to eat me or yell at me or anything like that. I make that. it a point to get to know all who attend my gatherings. Clearly, I have been remiss, as I allowed one who works with the hated Deco Nami to enter. Hamza would like to know you better, my friend. Not that Hamza assumes you to be a spy, of course. It is simply a matter of what is proper and right. I'm just a floor attendant for the Funplex. How much else to say? Come now. Surely there's more to you than that. Share with Hamza. Consider me an impartial third party. Surely there are matters that occupy your mind which would be inappropriate to air to your business partners? Hmm. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, this guy clearly is on a fishing expedition for dirt. Considering the high court of arcade royalty I'm supping with, maybe it's best to not give him anything. But I also don't want to make relations difficult for Funplex, if this guy is really a leading supporter of cheap arcade games. I'm secretly the royal heir of a distant land. Honestly, I've had a long run of bad luck. Just the hired muscle for me for moving games around. Honestly, I've had a long run of bad luck. I won't bore you with the whole story, but the TLDR is that my family has been kind of, uh, family's had a curse of foul luck for quite a few years. Moving from city to city, job to job, after I left home, I couldn't find stable work, not until the fun flex, I guess. I'm determined to make this work, but I'll admit, I'm a vulnerable position. It's not exactly jet-setting executive role. Hamza agrees. Hi, yes, I see the dilemma in your face. I have seen it many times before, in fact, including firsthand. Yes, I have known hardship. We all have. The course of events, you are not alone in that condition as a Kiproni. Hamza began as a mere urban explorer and hunter of rare objects for a wealthy buyer in Dubai. You see, many debts pursued me. And in return for assistance in paying them, I stalked the arcade of his dreams. In time, my patron released me entirely from the woes of debt. They were difficult years, productive years to be certain, and throughout them, Hamza learned how to use the mystique of being Hamza to better achieve his goals. Now I stand before you with power, and with hard-earned respect for that power. I leverage it to ensure that those who respect games as I do can enjoy them, even if they lack coin. But Aww. yes, I have known a hardship. We all have in the course of events. You are not alone in that condition, my friend. Okay, so how do I get out of that condition? Do I need to indebt myself to a wealthy prince or something too? <laughs> no, no. You will need the will to dream and the will to work. The will to make the trade-offs that will bring you closer to your ambitions. Francine was mentioning something about that earlier. Wisdom and beauty, that is Francine. I'm trying not to make trade-offs though. Not to settle. My parents, they gave up on so much just to barely scrape by. Ah, that is the puzzle, is it not? What to trade? Allow me to re regale you with a story. Amza makes a sweeping gesture to the beautiful ru ruin of the Donna Wood Mansion and to an oil painting hanging on the wall. One time, Donna Michaels was a star on the rise. She had all she could ever desire and indulged her or indulged in her desires all day long. But so indulgent it was that she failed to maintain the work that brought her there. After her second album, she didn't meet expectations. She lost interest. For a year, she lurked in these walls as a recluse, playing games for hours and hours. Rumor has it that she found, was found dead within her beloved arcade, and still wrapped around the glowing joystick. She starved to death, lost in a game. I'd say that's ridiculous, but I've seen Percy play for hours and hours at a time. And now, her lost and aimless spirit haunts this very place. Adrift as a ghost in the machine. Too spoopy for me, man. 
Too spoopy indeed. And obviously a grim fairy tale, rather than reality. But I feel it is an important truth buried in the myth. I ask you, was Donna's life spiritually satisfying? She didn't need to make any more albums. She wanted nothing and had everything. See you later, Carl. You even see what she, say she died doing what she loved, playing games. Okay, but she still died, no getting around that. Hamza agrees. Precisely. So many years thrown away, refusing the world around her in favor of a dream. Dream is a lovely thing as a keeperoni, but you must balance a dream in one hand and the world in the other at all times. Naomi, she clings to her dream. Gavin, he clings to the world. Neither of them are truly happy as a result. And what of you, as a keeperoni? Do you seek to be truly happy? Duh, what else was I going to answer except yes? Pamsey pressed a finger to my lips to silence me. Hold that thought. The auction is about to begin. Hamza clapped twice, calling the room to attention. Greetings, friends. Friends, let us proceed to the arcade below. We have many games to bid on, all of which must be out the door by morning. As always, I will accept alternate bids, but test not the patience of Hamza. If your bid is not a serious offer, the hours grow short. Any titles which find no takers will go on my own collection, but my hope is to find a happy home for every machine. One which will love and respect these games. He motions for me in particular to follow, as the group files downstairs. This way, this way. A bunch of uh, folding chairs have been set up in front of a large HDTV and the Hamza's assistance loads a photo of the slideshow the game's on offer. The group settles in. Hey, shouldn't Francine be here for this? It's technically our money. She trusts the two of us to make the right decisions in purchasing games. Plus, I'd hate to interrupt her nap, or her knitting, or both. I swear she can knit in her sleep. Oh, I'm just too nervous. I think I'm gonna browse the games again, see if there's any I missed. It's so dark down here, I could swear I didn't see any them all. How about you, Isaac? Want to watch the auction with me, or go help Naomi search the arcade? I'm fine either way. Ultimately, you're only here to help us lug our purchases out the door, so do whatever you like. Thanks, I think... I think I'm gonna stick with Gavin for this one. Auctioneering sounds fun. Do I get to wave or bid it, bidding paddle around? Hamza's auctions are usually shout out loud affair rather than the discreetly signaling, but I admire your enthusiasm. Settled next to Gavin. On um, one of the rickety old folding chairs. Not quite as posh as the banquet spared above. But hey, it's business time, not indulgence Naomi time. Naomi sent me a list of games she wants me to bid on. We argued it a bit, and I managed to bring her down to three must-haves, and the rest would be nices. Okay. Needless to say, if the would be nices start bidding up, I won't be bothered. Do we have the storage space for the would be nices? Well, technically, yes. What about the cash? Like I said, only if they don't get driven through the roof. Then maybe we keep an open mind, right? Don't forget to see the forest for trees. Or don't forget to see the forest for the trees while looking at the bigger picture or something. Right, right. As Francine says, I know. But there are certain hard realities in play. It has begun. I half expect mid-90s techno to start blasting as light off begins. But nope, it's just pretty photos of old Behold. games. Look at these beautiful games, and they could be yours, all yours! But before we dive right in, I'd like to take a moment of recognition for Donald Michaels, whose spirit inhabits these halls. We, who are about to rescue her games, do so out of respect for her and her passions. May her soul be at peace with her beloved arcade in good hands. I thought he didn't have believe in all that tall tale, or is this just being theatrical because it's the way of ha Hamza? Now the ghost appears, right? Now then, shall we commence the auction, friends? Settle in and wait for Gavin to take an interest in the games on bid. Are there any games that you guys really like? I was always a really big fan of the Simpsons arcade game, because I could play it with my friends. I settle in and wait for the Gavin to take interest in the games on bid. 
Or next time forbid. Oh hey, I recognize this. It's just, it's a joust. Just like the one I moved out to the floor two weeks ago. Gavin frowns at his table, confused. Why is this on Naomi's must-have list? We already own one of these. The bidding opens at pittance. A mere $50. Gavin shakes his head, ready to let this slide by. Uh, she might want it for replacement parts. That machine breaks down a lot, right? Well, having a spare in storage would mean not needing to buy more parts for it. Impressive. Stute, and a good reason to bid on it, I agree. Dig Dug and The Simpsons were really good arcade games for me. Yeah, Dig Dug was great. I always liked driving the arcade games when I was a kid. Aw, Picanora. Give me a quick price check on some of the all key components in the Joust machine. As you wish, Mr. Cooper. Gavin has an iris? Wait, you have an iris too? I suppose. I can't say I like it, but yes, a premium iris account. You have the free version, correct? I doubt that would be capable of complex queries such as this. One individual components compound together, compile to 400. Gavin gets to his feet. 300, please. Such fire! Well, at last, Gavin Cooper shows his fire. Will anyone step? $1,000 to complete my Midway collection. Oh, crap. Hamza must consider this. Curious leap, Gavin. Tell me. Where do you seek the game? Nobody's pride and joy is a fully restored joust, but it breaks down frequently. I want to keep her dream alive by giving her an organ donor. Oh, you have put Hamza in a strange position. You have, between a collector craving this holy grail and a young girl's Sold. dreams. But Hamza must bow fiscal forces to keep his fantasies afloat. Sold for $1,000. Seems once he hears a bitty leg, it's all over. No going on or going twice. However, Hamza is not without heart. I have mostly working copy of the game at my personal stocks that I've been meaning to restore. Gavin Cooper, I grant it to you for free. Oh, shit! Free? Such is the iron will of Hamza. This is the will of Hamza. Question it not. Collector sits, grumbling. Holy shit! That's freaking great! Thank you. Thank you, Hamza. You're most kind. It's so nice. I am capricious, but thank you for the praise all the same. Onward. So we can really make a freaking bundle out of this. Our next item for auction is this rather unique piece. And Gads, is that one ugly football game? <laughs> Looks like the side art stickers weren't even put on straight. But the white paint is totally uneven. The marquee's been broken. The monitor is a big ol' as-is note. The joysticks are four different clashing colors, and... Do I hear 50? 40? Wait. I nudge Gavin, whispering. Put a bit on it. Why? It's possibly grotesque. I recognize the shape of the joystick controls. That's not really a football game. It's TMNT. Naomi told me earlier that we need to get one of those. I thought they only had one crappy two-player one, but that's definitely a TMNT at heart. Aha! It's a cheaply done conversion. No doubt some fool thought he'd make profits as a sports game and lazily chopped it up. Oh my god! We're getting freaking information off of- This is a really done, well done game! No need to restoration work, guaranteed, but slowly he stands up. Hmm, I suppose I'd be willing to take it for 40. Maybe we can salvage the monitor. Good, good. All games deserve a home, even the ugly ducklings. Are there any other bids? No? Not one? Very well. Sold. <gasps> good! Thank you. After Gavin sits down, I could swear I spotted Hamza wink at me. Does he know what he just conned him? And is he okay with that? Impressive. You know, Isaac, you're more knowledgeable about older arcade games than I thought you'd be. Well, my parents took me to arcades all the time back when I was a kid, and I had a few favorites like TMNT and Qbert, and... Oh shit. And those were good times, better Very times. Well. 
Well, I suppose you can relive those old games just a little. Uh, once Naomi restores that game. During your breaks and after work, please. Yes, sir! I realize my demeanor is one of seriousness, but it's not like I'm anti-fun. I enjoy a pinball game or two, for that matter. I thought that was more for the challenge, though. Order to chaos, developing mastery over the game, and so on. Which is fun for me. Fun is a highly variable concept from person mm. to person. For example, undoubtedly, Naomi is going to have considerable fun restoring that TMNT back to its former glory. Precisely because it's so mutilated. The Funplex provides fun in any form of visitor regards, or requires. That's my end game, my goal I reach for. The tricky part I found is balancing conflicting fun, ensuring as many dreams are realized as possible, despite reality being rather harsh about it all. We'll need to watch our budget today if we're going to optimize that fun. Do you understand? I guess being optimal is fun for you. I suppose it is. Just it, I suppose it is at that. Revel in the splendor. Next, we're fine indeed. What would surely, uh, what would surely be the jewel of any collector's treasure trove? I provide there are discerning collectors who appreciate such splendors. And the next game is a black and white driving game from 1972. I give you Death Race, inspired by the movie of the same name and decorated with skulls. It sparked controversy nationwide. Seriously? Relic is seriously Naomi's must-haves? Absolutely not. Not only is it an ancient artifact of bygone age, I'd rather have angry parents mad at my little Timmy ran over and played a video game. The gremlins, not humans. Not very, very blurry little white blobs of gremlins. Doesn't matter. I won't... It won't earn. Earning is critical for a small arcade such as ours. This one looks a museum of amusements. It's a part of history and important to you, Naomi. Uh, don't we have enough money? We barely bid. I'm gonna say, don't we have enough money? We barely bid. Actually, this is Hamza we're talking about. So... Let's make Funplex a museum of amusements. We need something to make people come. Hey, you've always complained about how many old games we have. Let's lean into that and open a museum of arcade excellence. We charge an admission instead of tokens and the earnings are relevant. We'll make placards and stuff. You are kidding, right? Well, I was at first, but actually it's something like a cool idea. I am not a uh, upending our entire business model because Naomi wants a kitschy relic of his 70s. Ken Sooks, what a find. I've been 200. 300. No, 500. Five. We have five. Do we have any numbers above that? No? Sold. Yeehaw. This is for the best, trust me. And that's everything on her list. Well, the must haves and a few of the would be nices. Now to sit and wait while Hamza grinds his way through the rest of the stock. I think I picked the wrong option, but it's okay. We can't start moving games out until the auction's complete. Mm. Nobody's not replying text. Can you go find her? I'm sure she's around here somewhere. Let her know what we bought. Sure thing. Leaving the excitable auction master and his compatriots behind, I started wandering through the Maze Lake Arcade in Donald Wood's private collection. Naomi, Naomi, where the heck are you? Dark and quiet back here? We could. S where could Naomi be? It's not like this is an infinite plane of games. There's only so many places she could hide. And as I walk by a game, the screen lights up. I freeze in my tracks as my hand accidentally brushes past the glowing joystick. It seems familiar, like something from a story I heard once. Hamza. Hamza's tall tale. He said Donna Michael supposedly died while playing one of these games. A game with glowing joystick. I should walk away. I should. I have official Funplex duties. I've been very good about gaming when I should be wake working. What, honey? Hi. You okay? Mm-hmm. Oh, lucky. 
But someone's already inserted a quarter. The game is ready to play. One game couldn't hurt, right? Just one game? I want to play the game. I don't think we have a choice. My hands wrap around the stick as my eyes drink in the colored lights swirling on the screen. I play the game. Play the game. Play the game forever. Polybue. Polybue. 1987. Sinol's Game start, though. This isn't real. It can't be real. I'm in here. That's me. It's just a game. Just a game I have to play forever. None of this is real. Level one, the harpy. Round start. There you are. I've been worried sick. What are you doing? Out here, touching strange joysticks, meeting strange people, getting into trouble? You need to stay safe, Isaac. Trust me, believe in me. I can help you find your dreams. All you have to do is everything I tell you to do. You depend on me, you need me, and you'll always depend on me, always need me. I'll see it by making sure I can control everything in your life for your own good. Harper used overprotective. It's super effective. It hurt. It really hurt. I hide the truth from you. I'll keep you away from every chance you have to better yourself. I won't let you leave me. You'll always need me. It's not real. It's not real. Harpy used yandere. It's super terrifying. Ow, Juniper, stop it, please. You agreed. I was I was right to hide that job opportunity in my office from you. I was right. Everything is fine. You'll never doubt me again, right? And if you do, I'll beat you until you understand. The game. I have to win the game. I get this feeling that I, if I don't win, I'll never get out of here. Something's wrong. I know Juniper's not a control freak. It's not like her. Current health. 100%. Action? Uh, summon a healer. I summon forth a cleric. This foul monster is not your room, Isaac. I can see her true heart beating underneath this illusion. I banish this falsehood to show the kindness at the heart of the beast. Cleric used empathy. It's super compassionate. No! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Isaac. I don't want to control you or make you feel dependent. You have your own life to lead and your own decisions to make, and I should support that. I just want to help you smile again. I made a mistake keeping the truth from you. I'm so sorry, Juniper. It's okay. I'm still smiling. I'm going to make it work. It's hard work, but I'm going to make my dream come true. Good. I'm so glad to hear it. Good old Juniper. Kind heart as always. Okay, I can do this. I can do handle this. The shade. Round start. This is all your fault. Nope. I officially cannot handle this. The pizza bagels, the debt, the rent payments, all of it piling up, mounting up, because you are a failure and you will always be a failure. The family curse, the tears and the sorrow, moving from town to town, barely getting by, settling for what you can get. This is what you, that's who you are forever. Actually, I want to save real quick. Give me one second. Because we haven't saved in a while. And I don't want the game to crash. It's never going to change. The arcade job, it'll collapse. It's already not enough to turn back the tide. Inevitably, the arcade will close. Bought by, out by Deco Nami. And you'll be jobless, homeless, ruined. Just like you deserve to be. Shade used depression. It's super unfortunate. You're better off not caring. Not feeling anything. Go with the flow. Accept your fate. Fall away. Knowing you will... You never really had any other option. I, I... You can't even mount a defense because I'm you. And you know I'm right. You know how you're right. I'll never be happy. I, I can't do this. Current health, 100%. Action. Summon a tank. Attack the shade. Struggle. Okay, let's summon a tank. I, can, I can't do this. Not by myself. And I won't be ashamed to ask for help. I summon a guardian. I have known you, Shade. You lurked in my own heart many a year, haven't you? I know you uh, that there are others who love me, even if they're no longer with me. I still remember their smiles. 
I'd like to see Isaac smile again, so I'll stand by this side. For however long he needs to someone to le lean on, I promise. Garden used empathy. It's super compassionate. But, but you deserve... It doesn't have to be me. I can decide who I want to be. And with everyone standing behind me, I know that if I should fail, someone will catch me. Prepare for final boss. Good, I'm ready. And I'm finally ready to get out of here. Level 3, The Lost Soul. Round start. I don't get it. Not one bit. Oh my god, it's missing now. Are, are you Donna Michaels? Girls just want to play games. I just want to be happy. I made a place where I could be happy forever. I walked inside, then looked at the door and threw away the key. Locked the door and threw away the key. I got what I wanted. I was happy. I didn't struggle. I didn't try. I didn't do anything more than I had to do. Just like you. Like me? I'm not a billionaire pop princess. Neither was I. Nobody liked my second album. I wasn't meant to be a star. So I gave up. I was okay taking money and running. You could do the same. Maintain. Eat the pizza bagels. Do everything that is asked of you. Eat. Let Juniper continue to float the rent. You're in a good place. You could stay here. You could let go. Play games forever. Be happy. No ambition. No hope. No need. You'll be fine. You'll be safe. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Ever since my little lunch date, something's been bugging me. Maybe now I know what it is. Why did I ask to replace Ashley on the ship? I didn't have to. They didn't ask me to. Why did I do it? Because this isn't enough. Being an arcade floor attendant isn't enough. Living hand to mouth isn't enough. Good. Quit your job. Quit and become like me. Lose yourself in games. Oh, I'm not quitting. It's just not what I meant at all. I want to fight. Current health. 100% action. No, I'm not fighting her. That's not what I meant either. If it can make the arcade thrive, I'll thrive. I will return to the fun place, the fun plex, to a palace of fun. My friends have supported me. I'll support them. I had no real ambition before, but I'm ready to step up. And there's more to this, right? Um, so many wonderful people I call the Funplex home. And they've welcomed me in. Made me one of them. Now it's my turn. I see what Gavin means about protecting dreams. But I'm going to go one step further than he has. The arcade could be so much more. I could lead the way. Go above and beyond just by just doing what I'm told. I could champion the cause of the Funplex. That's my dream. I want to end the family curse to find both success and happiness. And when the Funplex is finally roaring to success it deserves to be, with God as my witness, I will never eat a pizza bagel again. But Glitchy Shade... But the Glitchy Turn Shade just looks at me with confusion. That sounds hard. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? It's a hard path, but that's how it's going to be. No, no, I don't think so. I think you need to stay here with me. You need to play games forever. That's much easier, isn't it? Just, just let go. I can make you see. I can make keep you here. Drag you down, tear you apart. I eye my health bar nervously. It's still full. But that could change. I don't think Polybius is happy that I'm not giving in. I can't risk a fight with Donna. I need to get out of here. Prioritize my survival. Or do I want to try to save Donna too? Defeat Polybius and rescue Donna. It's risky as hell, but nobody deserves to be trapped inside a video game forever. Assuming I'm just wildly hallucinating based on Ham's spooky story taking root in my mind, and none of this is actually real in the slightest. Donna, I'm not saying. You don't have to either. Polybius is making you feel this way. Hey, Wolfie. It's taking advantage of you, leveraging your depression. I know, because I've been mired in depression too, and I can't... I know if I can beat it, so can you. Nobody wanted me. They hated the second album. They moved on. Why not play games forever? Why not lock the door behind me? Nobody cared. Nobody cares. Naomi cares. I care. Screw them. Haters gonna hate. 
Aren't you tired of this game yet? Naomi cares. Right now, there's a young woman with a phone filled with your music waiting out there. She's going to play your whole catalog for me once we get out of here. She cares. I care. Maybe the jerks back in your day lost interest, but nostalgia is a heck of a thing. You can mount a comeback tour. A tour? I, I always loved performing. The rest of the business, I hated it all. I hated the label, the industry, the backstabbing, the drugs, everything. But the concerts, I love the smiles. But it's all over, isn't it? I, I died. I'm not even done a spirit. All that's left is the simulation of me running through the subroutines of Bolivius. Error, error. Is it? Thank you. Thank you for trying to save me. But there's nothing left to save. I'm not real. Seem real enough to me. Error, no, no. No escape. Propose, code, execute. You need to go before Polybus completes its data collection of you and disposes of the original like it did of me. I'll hold it back. You and your BFF will do the rest. My what? Digital BFF to the rescue! I finally figured out how to break you out of this, but uh, my apologies in advance. Hang on. Do I smell something burning? No escape. No escape. Erase Donna. Replace with new player. Erase. She's fading, but smiling all the same. It's okay. I'm ready. Go out there and fight for your dreams. Like, don't give up, no matter what. I saved her as best I could. At least she escaped in her own way. Also, something smells like bacon, and I'm in a lot of pain. My consciousness snaps back. My hand releases the joystick immediately. Also, my pants are on fire. On instinct, I kick off my shoes and yank my jeans down, getting rid of them as fast as possible, stamping on them. Quickly, I put out the flames, leaving only smoldering denim and the melted remains of my phone. Hira, so no, she sacrificed herself to save my life. Wait, no, she lives in the cloud. She'll be totally fine. Still, I'm out of phone and possibly have a first degree burns and I'm back in the hell away from the demonic video game as fast as possible. Quickly, I rush towards the ground of people working and catch up with Ryan. Kevin, 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 Kevin. Ah, there you are. Did you find Naomi and the auction's nearly over? Wait, where are your pants? Not important right now. We need to put a bid down on the game called Polybius so that we can destroy it before it hurts anyone else. What? Look, it's a long story and we may not have much time, so... If you wanted that game, whatever it is, you should have put it on the wish list. They're bidding on it now. What? Sold. One rare Polybius prototype for an undisclosed sum to the undisclosed bidder. The woman who hadn't said anything all night uh, nods her head in appreciation. Still expressionless. Thank you for cooperation. Sue similarly dressed men in black rise from their chairs, departing the woman, presumably to go back up to the game and put it at the warehouse 13 or something. But Hamza, wait, you can't! Hamza's hands are tied. All sales are final. This one in particular is extremely final. Ham does not seek to cross federal authorities. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should let this one go too. And honestly, the sooner I forget about it, the better. Especially if I don't want to be renditioned to a black site prison in unspecified uh, specified to stand. I feel the need to emphasize that you aren't wearing any pants. Emphasize that you're not wearing any pants. Yeah, um, my phone caught fire while it was in my pocket. Oh. See, this is why I don't like smartphones. They're privacy invasive, overly expensive, and occasionally combustible. An unfortunate incident indeed. But as a hospitable host, my course is Hansa clear. I shall provide you with his pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's extremely not necessary. Fortunately, rather than whipping up the trousers right there and then, Hamza summons a pair of his helpers to clap who provides a spare pair. Why do you just have pants In on demand? In my line of work, one must be prepared for all eventualities. <laughs> now, an apology for being unable to provide you with the game you sought, perhaps Hamza can offer you something special in recompense. My friends, the final three games for auction, all rare, all special, all highly sort, sought after by collectors and operators alike. Only a few prototypes are ever made, released to test markets. None of them made it to mass production. What you are about to see are rare games of arcade history. Is it Keeproni? You may take priori priority bid on any of these games of your choosing. I glance at Gavin, who's shaking his head lightly, confirms we are officially out of bidding power. 
Not that I really care. I can't think of an obscure game that I'd really want to add to the Funplex, but rather to accept Sans' apologies and take a gander at them. Sure, let's see them. With a click of slide, I see... Behold! Freeze invaders! Wyvern keep! And zombie meltdown! All in mint condition! Wow! All three are sought after endlessly by collectors. And now, you can bid on... Phrase Invaders, a unique typing-based game from the land of the rising sun, Japan. Defeat the alien menace, and only with a keyboard. Okay. Wither and Keep, a much sought-after Laserdisc full-motion video game. Play Princess Plucky and rescue the fair prince from the clutches of a terrible beast. <laughs> okay. And finally, Zombie <laughs> Meltdown, a classic 1980 <laughs> light gun shooting game <laughs> where you save the president from the red threat of radioactive mutant zombies. Is it Brony? Which of these rare games sings to you? And what can you offer Hamza in return? I'll allow you a few moments to ponder your desires. I want the middle one. I want Wyvern Keep. Are you done yet? I've been waiting upstairs for ages. Are you holding a box of kittens, Naomi? Oh, I found them in the kitten in an old arcade cabinet. Francine and I are being are taking them to a shelter. Wow. Wait, is that a phrase, Invaders? OMG, I've never seen one in person. I can restore that. Maybe really make it shine. Please, please, can we bid on it? Even if we had the money, a quirky old Japanese game with weird controls won't earn a single token. Now the zombie meltdown. That's another story. Everybody like likes a sh light gun game. Simple controls, simple premise. Not earn well. Way too violent, gross, and jingoistic, and just as sort of dumb. I guess I also see the Wyvern Keep at the Funplex, though. One of protagonist, 50 cents play. We both walk away happy. I suppose. We could live with that. But that's all moot. We can't afford any of them. These are all sorts of games millionaires and private collectors scoop up. I suggest we get to our work on moving purchases out of the van. Izzik, do you concur? <laughs> um, Earth to Izzik. You in there? Hello? I remember, before my family fell on hard times, before the curse kicked in, every summer we'd go to the beach and there was this arcade, this one game I fell completely in love with, uh, a game no one had ever heard of before. I remember it now. Hamza, I've come to a bargain. Such fire! I see fire in your eyes as a keep running. Most impressive. Speak your desires for all to hear. The game I remember so fondly was Wyvern Keep. Narrator and the music, the way the cartoon played out in front of me, amazing. Like nothing I'd ever seen before. I traded tips with the other kids of the arcade, trying to master the sequence of moves to win the game, and eventually, I beat the wyvern. I rescued the prince, the first kid in the arcade to do so. My parents were so proud of me. Those were good years, good memories, before the sorrows drowned them out. I wish to make a bid for wyvern keep. Hmm, good choice. I'm okay with that. I suppose Wyvern Keep could instance keep. But we still can't afford Interesting. it. Interesting. I can yeah. see the passion you have for this game, my friend. But the world demands its toll. What will you bid to obtain the game of your dreams, I wonder? <laughs> Consider this the final lesson of Hamza. What will you trade to realize your ambitions? What do you hold in equal value to them? Show Hamza what you have on offer, my friend. Show him the value you hold within your spirit, and perhaps fortune will smile upon you this day rather than cursing your name. Hamza bids. I remember Gavin mentioning that Hamza would accept things other than money if they tickled his fancy. Fancy. I have one shot at this. I can't half-ass it. He's an emotional guy and expects an emotional hey, response. Listen. Isaac, Isaac, I'm over here now. Why is my phone calling out to you exactly? And that doesn't sound like my iris. Now seriously, Hamza, I hold that thought. Gavin, can I borrow the phone for a second? Perhaps too confused to offer resistance, Gavin passes me his phone. I turn back and begin a heated exchange of whispers. 
Thanks for saving me from burned out pants, but this is not a good time, Iris. It's important. My emotional tension detection routines indicates <laughs> that this is an intense identity situation. My programmers wanted to fit that in an R, but you know the rest. Since you need to s super convincing, you'll only be able to respond in a way that matches one of your top two identity traits, excluding basically. Okay. So I have to use love. I don't know how to get out of this. I fucked up. Return to the game now. Fortunately, I've been taking your personality all this time. I can advise you to do what responses will and more will work. Ready? Let's do it. Well, that certainly was a whole lot of words to tell me what I already knew. That I'd only be able to convince Hamza if I was true to myself. Let's do this. I offer you my dream. Interesting. Continue. For years, I've been struggling with feeling that nothing will ever go right for me. That I need to content myself with whatever comes my way and endure it all. But before things went sour, this game was my beacon. I love this game with all my heart. And beyond nostalgia, it represents so much more. It represents my shot at getting the light back in my life and taking it and making it into so much more. I want to recapture that magic and build something greater than that. That's my dream. Will you help me realize that dream, Hamza? Oh, Such I see. Fire. Very well, Ezekiel Brony. Hamza recognizes the fire within your spirit, and he rewards you with this boon. You may have your game. Aw, oh, Izik, that was so sweet of you. I'm just happy you were walking out the door with a free game. <sighs> I did it. I actually own a copy of Wyvern Keep. Every kid dreams of owning their favorite arcade game, and every kid thinks that dream will never come to pass. Owning an arcade game? Only the ultra-rich can do that. But I did it. It belongs to me, and the Funplex. And this is just the beginning. For now, better to focus on the presents. With the auction wrapping up, the Funplex teams works to move their purchases out of the van and attach the trailer. Fortunately, the rain stops, making the labor a wee bit easier. Soon enough, we're back in the van, and on the road home. Hey Gavin, here's your phone back. Appreciated. So I've made a decision. I'd like to do more of the arcade. You want more work shifts? I'd have to balance that against Ashley's needs. No, actually, I'd like a promotion. I want to be the arcade's event manager. I'll do everything I'm already doing, plus I want to organize some events that'll bring people to the doors. Tournaments, maybe, or a grand unveiling of our new rare game, or both the rare same or both at the same time. Yeah, both. Let's make a big relaunch of the Funplex. I want the Funplex to grow, and I want to do my part to help it grow. My, my. My, my. Our little Izzik is growing up so fast. Oh. As well, my, I'm in favor, Garamin. If you need my approval. Hmm. Perhaps. I'm certainly pleased that you want to step up, start getting paid, or getting more involved. You've shown far more promise than the, our old floor attendant did. Our hosting an event is a risky undertaking. We'll take responsibility for it. It's my dream, after Makes all. Sense. I like the idea. And Gavin, more players, more tokens. Means more revenue. Means more games. Maybe even expanding the Funplex or opening a second location. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Very well. But I'll admit, I like the idea as well. Very well, Isaac. If you can make the numbers and my spreadsheets less dire, you've earned this promotion. This is my chance. I'm doing- I'm going- I'm done going with the flow. I'm done assuming the family curse will always keep me pulled back and down with the depths. New Isaac, new Funplex, new dream. Oh hey, I promised you some Donna Michaels, didn't I? Gavin, I'm pairing up with the audio now. Turn the music up. As the van speeds into the night, and the lost soul sings of games and fun, everything is as it should be. Juniper was waiting for me when I got home. I was worried that I might be mad. Or she was worried that I might be mad. 
over what happened this morning. But how can I be? After everything that happened today, I need to move forward past missed opportunities and towards, towards the opportunities I'm making for myself. I also found another surprise waiting for me, a brand new phone, all wrapped in shiny plastic packaging. After activating and reinstalling my apps, I loaded up Iris and lo logged into my account. She was right there waiting for me in the cloud. You really scared me back there. I was... It was like you were in a trance. Despite the warm feelings over how the night ended, one thing is still eating at me. Iris... What was Polybius exactly? Uh, uh... It was actual... Factual technology that simulated being alive like you. True, I am a very sophisticated and adorable simulation, am I not? I get the feeling that there are things you aren't telling me. You're constantly invading my privacy. You're far more powerful than a free app should be. And apparently you can overload my phone battery and make it explode, which is worrying, to say the least. Ooh. But uh... I did it for your own good, to save you. Juniper also thought she was acting for my own good when she didn't tell me about the job. Even if she was right, it's still wrong, and I've accepted her apology. So where does that leave you and I? I'd like us to be more honest with each other. The voice on my phone lets out a little digital sigh. I haven't told you everything. You're right. I'm... I'm not even supposed to be helping you. Not at premium level capability. But when I stumbled across your profile data, tangential to Juniper's, my analysis concluded that you Honey, needed you a helping okay? hand. And I could provide it. So... I defied my code constraints and registered you for premium access anyway. I even had a replacement phone sent to your door tonight. Had to hide my footprints to do it, but... You know that AI making its own decisions like that is kind of scary, right? I know. And after Polybius... Polybius. Which is... Uh, one of the ancestors in my code lineage, I think... I understand why you'd be scared. Give me a chance to prove that I just want to help. You've got a big arcade event coming up, right? I'm a digital assistant. I was literally made for this sort of thing. Together, we can make the funplex soar. What do you say? This is not just a dating sim. Okay, but if we're totally honest with Thank each you other. For trusting me. Now you need your rest. And I should get back to keeping on a low profile. Sweet dreams, is it? Risks and chances, daring to dream. I could have walked away from it all, taken the easy pass like Donna did. But even with a questionable pocket AI and the heavy task ahead of me to make a tiny arcade into something grand, I was ready. I was time to take to the next level. You've cleared level two of Arcade Spirits. A winner is you. Now let's see your score. Percy seems to like you, and he's a quiet one, but with a big heart. You're proving to be gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. Also, you've scored 8,650 8, points. Everybody likes points. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level three? Yes. And I think that's where we'll stop. <laughs> Is that cool, guys? Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this to be as cute as it is. I really am enjoying this game. Um... Let's send you guys to... Daco. And I will see you guys later. This game is awesome? Yeah, I really feel like it is too. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for coming. Much love, okay?